Keep on the head of a 10. So, um, from your uh, pin and your then, also, so uh, here, this move. So the initial move, make sure you drop and you move to the side. To move your send your send. And then you turn to get the rest of the body out of the way. And while you're turning, you apply one move and you also apply the other move. They're both using this rotation, but they are putting pressure or redirect the person in two directions. So this direction and this direction. So this hand is following this hip. This hand is following the other hip. So if I can down straight, slowly. So I move, turn. I move and turn. So if you put those two applications together, can you see how sense you can move this way? That's exactly what I want because um, you need to use a like a vector in there. So these are the two directions. So if I'm pulling this direction and then at the same time I pull this direction when you have them pulled both which I'll need an assistant so if I pull hard and Simon pulls lightly we get more of this direction because if Simon pulls hard and only pulls softly but if we have the same force, can you see the vector? It's shooting off that way, and that's the way that we want the force to go. Because we want sensory carry to be loosely balanced in this direction. Thank you, Simon. So I need this hip and this hand coming back, this hip and this hand going forward at the same time. So, can you see the direction it's going? And also, we're putting the lock on the arm. We can actually use one to attack the elbow, but 
not a good way to practice with um, your uh, your partner, else they'll end up with tennis elbow, or even worse. Okay, so you need to apply just enough pressure, and then you need to hold that pressure while you are bringing your hip back to kick. When you kick, when you kick, it's not a my get it. On the other hand, it's not a great big sweeping wash here. Your kick needs to be just off a my get it. And it actually follows this line. That's the shortest route over here. Yeah? To do the kick. Not a big wash get it. Not a my get it. But the short wash get it. Mash. So, keep. Also, when you move forward, you need to move this arm as well. To push, to get down. Then you will say so. We will get the when you do your, a good way to practice as well is to uh, push to the side of the hip and then let the hip come back. And so if you can practice, bear the arms at first, and turn back. Turn. When you go down, keep the pressure on. When you start doing Tanto Dori, you'll find this quite useful. When you start practicing it now, for later, Some instructors very early on would use So from uh, Uke's point of view, it's just reinforcing uh, the point Sensei made. Uh, there is a definite 45 degree to your attacking line vector for the direction Uke needs to be moving. It's not exclusively that way, it's not exclusively that way, it's in this 45 degree plane. Once Sensei got that pressure on, even when he added the Moashigeri, there was no loss of pressure on the elbow. Um, from a practice point of view, and you don't want to injure your UK's joints, but done full speed, this could severely be damaged, possibly even break the elbow, so be careful. But the big thing is to maintain that pressure all during the washigari. It only really released once the, the stone uh, was used. Um, again, pressure downwards on the arm, after the washigari, uh, again, it, it stops you being able to get up and mount a counter attack. So, a few important points to make this an, an effective wazer. 
So this is the conclusion of the Ippon series of Wazas. Uh, we hope you found them useful uh, and good information and lots of technical points to take away and add into your own training. Uh, as Sensei Bikram has mentioned before, uh, it may not be exactly what you do within your own school and your own version of Wada, but if you get the chance, try them out, you might find them useful. Obviously we're going to continue with uh, recording lessons online, so if there's anything you particularly would like to see, uh, we've had some previous requests and we tried to cover them in uh, the videos we've done so far. If there's anything else you'd like to see, any discussion points or anything you're not really sure about, please let us know uh, and we'll try and fit them in and include them in future lessons. Uh, if you'd like to hit the subscribe button to the channel so you get notifications when we post new content and if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. So I hope to see you again in the not too distant future.